What Ninja Theory set out to accomplish with Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice was bringing back the mid-tier game by working within a confined budget but still offer a AAA production. It is a self-published game, worked on by a small team, that is, it is a smaller experience but it has the feel and look of a blockbuster game allowing the team to focus on a story that they were passionate about and wanted to tell. Does it work out? There is no real way to talk about Hellblade without spoiling the game, but what I can tell you is that if you like linear adventure games that prioritize on narrative first and you can give Hellblade a full chance by completing it, more than likely you are in for a big surprise and you will love it as I have even if it's not all for you. This game isn't for everyone, and if you don't like narrative games that put story first, you might not enjoy this one. That being said, the rest of this review is going to reveal some spoilers that can't be avoided. I highly suggest that you check the game out for yourself, blindly, to get the full experience and effect. Again, spoilers ahead, you've been warned. In Hellblade, the player will take control of Sinua. Although you have complete control of her movements and actions, it's important to know that the game always makes you feel as an observer and not a participant. This is a deliberate move. You will solve many environmental puzzles that will may or may not be a fan of. I particularly enjoyed some of the puzzle solving, but felt the game relied too heavy on them. Again, this is a deliberate move. The game will thrust you into combat without a tutorial, and although it may seem and feel like a hack and slash button masher, the mechanics are deeper than they appear, but you don't notice how deep they are because there is no HUD. Again, a deliberate move. The game tells you that if Senua fails too many times, you will die and save progress that is gained will be lost, forcing you to start from the beginning. This isn't true, but it is stated that way intentionally. All of the mechanics, which feel half-baked at times, is to serve one thing. The narrative. Game mechanics take a back seat so that they can serve a narrative that is probably one of the best experiences in gaming as a whole, and reminds me why I love the medium. While we are on Senua's journey, we know from the beginning that not all is right, and the game does a good job of making the player feel uncomfortable and unsure about the situation at hand. Senua's adventure is a Nordic Viking version of Dante's Inferno, as Senua must travel to different layers of the underworld, all of which are guarded by an embodiment of sin and hate. She is doing this so that she can save the soul of her lost beloved Dillian. Sinew is haunted by voices that contradict her. They try to tear her down. They push her in, in the wrong direction at times or in the right direction. As the game progresses, we learn what these voices are and why she is different. She has psychosis and doesn't see things the way other people sees them. She sees the world differently and hears voices. To people at the time, she's listening to voices of underworld. And so she is like a witch. When a plague breaks out, she takes the blame. Her mother was the same way and was burned at the stake. Her abusive father tried to literally beat the demons out of her. Dillian, her one true love, is the only person that truly understands her. He knows that nothing is her fault and accepts her for being different. But when the Northmen come and wage war on their tribe, Dillian is brutally killed and beheaded. And with head in hand, she travels to the underworld to save his soul. But is this underworld she is traveling to real? Or is it all in her head? That is left for the player to decide. The game tells you that if you die too many times, you will lose all safe progress. This happens if the rot that has taken over Senua reaches her brain. And like I said before, this is not true. This can't happen. But it lets you know that every time Senua fails, a piece of her dies within the narrative. The environmental puzzles, which I think are a little too much at times, do serve their purpose, allowing the player to see the world through Senua's eyes and really make one wonder if she is experiencing a real thing or not. The combat is served with heavy and light attacks and a focus that slows down time that is earned by dodging and parrying at the right time. It may seem hack and slash, but can be intuitive. The big problem is there is no HUD to tell you how much focus you have. Only the glint of Sinua's mirror lets you know that it is available. This is so that the player doesn't get distracted and so that the player feels overwhelmed when the voices inside Senua's head says look behind you revealing an attack from behind. No part of the gameplay seems well executed while you are playing it but once you finish it and you put everything you experienced into perspective you see why the choices to do things this way were done. 
The story is very well timed and delivered and evenly paced and wouldn't have succeeded if it wasn't brilliantly acted. Melina Jurgens, who is a member of the development team, brilliantly brings a lot to the role of Sinua. And considering so much of the story focused just on Sinua, this was crucial. I'm amazed at how well this lady did with her first acting role. You felt every emotion Sinua felt, whether it be pain, sorrow, or that slight brief moment of joy. It all comes down to this one role, which is well executed. This is a story about acceptance, accepting who you are as a person, accepting that life is a struggle that must be endured in order to gain meaning, accepting that with each loss, we must keep moving forward even if we don't know what is waiting ahead of us. This is an inspirational story, and even though it seems like it all spirals down, at the end, it is uplifting and eye-opening. I really can't say enough about the narrative and experience of this game and how it has affected me, how it made me reflect on life. It is amazing that a video game can do this. I have to give this game a 10 out of 10. A legendary score. Ninja Theory did a good job at making me the player evaluate the real world around me and why things are the way they are. I can't fully explain that and I hope that if you played the game, you got the same Philly feels. And if you didn't, maybe you give the game a second chance. Anyway, let me know about your experience with Hellblade in the comments. Remember guys that I love your face and we'll catch you on the flip side. But until then, have a good one.